so I've been meaning to make a start to finish video of this knife project, but it's dragged on a lot longer than I thought it would, so I'm going to break it up into smaller chunks. I just want to start by saying I'm not a knife maker. There's a lot of great knife makers out there that I've been learning from, a lot of guys on YouTube. Uh, I'm just a guy with a CNC hobby, and I get a kick out of making a thing or, I guess, designing and planning a thing that can make a thing repeatedly. So as applies to knife making, you're going to see in these next few videos uh, my journey of work holding and planning and... Looking back on it, there's definitely things I could have done better, but this is my first go. I started out with brainstorming a whole bunch of ideas and tracing a few of my favorite ones out on cardboard. I'd cut them out and kind of see how they felt in my hand and what they looked like at full size. I ended up with this design and started thinking about how I could make the fixtures that would cut this blade. I knew it was going to be challenging because it's a lot longer and thinner and more difficult to hold than a lot of the other things I've machined, and I knew if I was going to do it well, it'd have to be held as rigidly as possible. So I wanted to bolt the stock down to some kind of fixture plate instead of squeezing it in a vise. The red parts you see here are the fixtures I've come up with. I've got a bunch of threaded holes in the base that'll let me clamp the raw stock down from the top and access the perimeters and bevels with an end mill. And I've got two locating pins here that'll let me put down the stock piece as well as flip it and know exactly where I am. Before I can clamp this material down to the fixture plate, I'd have to put in some clearance holes for the screws, the locating features for the dowels, and I cleared out these weight reduction pockets as well. Now that the holes are in the material, I could bolt it down to the fixture clamp. All I wanted to do in this operation was put in the sharpening choil here and do the first bevel of the blade. I'm cutting the sharpening choil with a 1 8 inch 4 flue coated carbide end mill, the bevel with a quarter inch 4 flue coated carbide end mill with a 60 thou rad, this is a parallel tool path and I was really happy with the finish while machining it, but during hand sanding I thought maybe it'd be a better idea to rough it and then come back in and take off a 20 thou skin or something to try to get a better finish. This was very hand sandable, but it took probably maybe 20 minutes a side to hand finish and this machining takes about a half hour per side. The next operation would be to flip the knife onto the other side, do this bevel, and then I would trace the bottom profile of the knife running a quarter inch end mill between the bolts and the bottom profile of the knife. I'd sort of come in like this and exit out here so I would separate this bottom piece of material from the top. I didn't get a video of the profiling of the bottom of the blade, but you can see here we've cut the material away and you can see the blade's edge. I was really happy here because I could see there was a pretty even thickness of the bottom of the blade. With the bottom all profiled out, I'd gain access to the top of the knife by taking this clamp off and putting on a clamp on the bottom. So I can now get in here and start working on the jimping with the 1 8 inch end mill as well as profiling the top with a quarter inch end mill. I had to pay extra attention to the tool paths and the stick out and the heights to make sure I don't hit any of my fixture clamps. And the blanks came out really well. I'm overall super happy. Um, the edge quality is good. The quality on the bevel I was really happy with, but looking back on it now, I wonder if I can't do any better. Uh, I had a few goofs on the first one. You can see here where the bevel meets the spine of the blade. There's a little ridge there. I had the zero set too high in my program and too low in real life. So this actually impacted the overall thickness of the blade. I was aiming for 10 thou and this one skinny's down to 10 because it's a little too deep. So even though I messed that up, it made me really happy to see that the consistency of the width of the blade was the same. So even though this one was 10 and it should have been 20, it was 10 all the way across. So I knew when I fixed the mistake, it would go away and it did on the second knife. I do plan on making one or a few more videos of the rest of the process. The G10 handle scale fixture came out really well. The scales themselves worked out nicely. Then there's a little bit more on heat treat and sharpening and finishing. So if you like this one, there'll be a little bit more coming in uh, the next little bit.